Welcome to Real Talk with Reginald D. I'm your host, Reginald D. Since we just celebrated Father's Day, I decided to dedicate this episode to my mentor and my teacher. I want to pay tribute to my grandfather, A.B. Sherman. Many of you that listen to the show have probably heard me talk about my grandfather. My grandfather's name is A.B. Sherman. Now, I know you're probably thinking, what does A.B. stand for? I used to ask my grandfather the same questions growing up, and he would tell me, A.B., that's it. So I came up with my own words that I thought A.B. should stand for. As remarkable as my grandfather was and the type of man he was, I said that A.B. should stand for America's best. My grandfather was married to my grandmother for over 60 years, and they had 11 children. My grandfather had only a third grade education. He worked in the fields picking cotton. That's why he couldn't go to school. But with only a third grade education, he eventually owned his own business. He owned a convenience store with a meat market in it. He was a pastor that built his own churches. He was a carpenter by trade also. Listen, it doesn't matter how you start off in life. You just have to be determined to make something out of your life. You have to do the things that make you better. My grandfather was big on capitalizing on opportunities. I remember some apartments were being built behind my grandparents' house. My uncle got a job on the construction site building these apartments. My grandmother used to cook homemade biscuits and things like that for my uncle to take to work for breakfast. Well, the other workers saw it and wanted to pay my grandmother to make them breakfast. She ended up selling breakfast out of the back door of their house. My grandfather saw that and he told my grandmother that he was going to build her a store next to the house. He did it and it was called Sherman Grocery. My grandfather knew that it would be successful once those apartments were built and occupied. So you got to understand that you can't take small opportunities for granted. Your smallest opportunity could end up taking you to your biggest opportunity. Now, my grandfather, A.B. Sherman, was a man of integrity. He was big on his name. He lived a life that made his name great. I remember when we would go out to eat after church, people would tell the waitress that they would pick up the check for Pastor Sherman. It happened all the time. I was blown away by the respect people had for him. So you have to understand that having a great name is critical in life. It's more valuable than money. A great name will open up doors for you that no amount of money can. And if you stay humble and put in the work, God will make your name great. My grandfather was about making the main thing the main thing. I remember one time he was asked to join this pastor's association with these other pastors around the region. He respectfully declined. He told me that joining organizations and associations becomes political and not about the kingdom. My grandfather said he knew his purpose and the mission that God sent him out to do. He said that all he needed was God and his wife. Check this out. In life, you don't need to be affiliated with a bunch of people. Your purpose is your purpose, and it's going to take you and God to fulfill it. Allow God to put the right people in your life. Now, my grandfather was also a man of compassion and love. He always tried to bring the best out of people. He served people. He understood servanthood. I remember one day there were some prisoners that was on the chain gang digging ditches in front of my grandparents' house. My grandfather went out and started talking to one of the prisoners. So later on, this guy was released from prison and he came by my grandparents' house. My grandfather started spending time with this guy. He would take him to church with him and things like that. Well, this guy ended up becoming a pastor from being under my grandfather's leadership. From a prisoner to a pastor, it blowed my mind when I watched this guy's life unfold like that. You have to understand you were put here on this earth to serve. You were put here to touch people's lives and to make a difference. There is nothing more powerful in your purpose than servanthood. Don't forget that. My grandfather, A.B. Sherman, also showed love. People used to say he had me spoiled. My grandfather never yelled at me. He always taught me and coached me, which worked every time. So you have to understand that yelling at your kids is not always the answer. I know they get on your nerves sometimes, but if you take the time to teach them and coach them, you will see a difference. Yelling and cussing is not going to do it. It will only intimidate your child. Now, my grandfather, A.B. Sherman, also had faith in me and trust in me. I think that was the biggest thing that empowered me, the faith and the trust he had in me. I remember one time my mom was dating this guy. And he was in his late 40s, 48, I think. 
Well, anyway, this guy made up a lie and said that he found marijuana in my car. Now, here I am, a teenager. I said to myself, ain't nobody going to believe me because I'm a teenager and teenagers have a reputation of being devious. I could not believe that this guy lied just to make me look bad and disappoint my grandfather. After this guy told this lie, my grandfather called us up to his house to talk about it. My grandfather looked at the guy and said, so you found marijuana in Dino's car. Keep in mind that Dino is my nickname. The guy answered back and said, yes, I did find marijuana in Dino's car. And he had this whole story about how he found it and where he found it at in my car. My grandfather let him finish the story. And then he looked at the guy and said, I need you to apologize to Dino right now. My grandfather told the guy, you didn't find any marijuana in my boy's car. My grandfather told the guy that he know what he built in me and that I wasn't built like that. So the dude ended up apologizing to me. Just crazy. But that made me feel empowered knowing that my grandfather trusted me. So you have to have faith and trust in your kids. I know they don't always do right, but having faith and trust in them will make them want to do the things to make you proud. Faith and trust will keep them close to you. Trust me. Now, I can write a book on my life with my grandfather, but I just wanted to pay tribute to him since we we're coming off celebrating Father's Day. On June 15, 2004, my grandfather passed away. He had just turned 90 years old on June 11th. That was the most devastating part of my life. I felt like I lost my God. I felt like I lost my teacher and my life coach. No more going up to his house and sitting around talking and getting the wisdom I needed. I allowed my life to start going backwards once my grandfather died. I was lost. But this is what happened to me one day. I began to think about all the stuff that he taught me, and that gave me the strength to rise up and walk in my purpose. After my grandfather passed away, I was laying in the bed sleep. And in the middle of the night, I woke up, and he was standing beside the bed. And he just leaped inside of me. It was like his spirit jumped inside of me and it made a noise that sounded like somebody taking a deep breath. So I just took it as if he left a part of him in me. I am really grateful for what my grandfather instilled in me and taught me. I learned business from him. I have ran corporate businesses and people think I've been to school for business and I haven't. I just watched my grandfather run a small store. The same concept. I was just dealing with more money. He taught me ministry. He taught me how to be a leader. He taught me how to have compassion and love. So here's to you, A.B. Sherman, who I know as Papa. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the legacy you left. I'm determined to make you proud. I love you, man. I salute you, sir. Let me leave you with this. I want to salute all fathers that's out there. I know it's hard. I know it gets tough trying to be a father. Some of you working multiple jobs. Some of you driving trucks over the road and away from your families. You are doing all of this just to provide for your family. I need you to know you are appreciated. Keep grinding and don't give up. You're going to reap the reward. God sees you and he got you. Thanks for tuning in to Real Talk Regular D. If you enjoyed the show, please share with anyone you feel that needs to take this journey with us on being a better youth. See you next time.